sharing our hope story, somebody that you might not have gotten to see for a long time because he is at Grimes helping start their ministry stuff. Uh, Brian, I just call you Shooty, but I was like, I, I, he gets he's one of the many Brians. There's, there's many of you here. But um, if you didn't know, the guys at Grimes uh, often are going through the same large group study that we are. They're like a week behind us as we do the, the study of things. But can you please welcome Mr. Shooty? Yeah, absolutely. Can you uh, just introduce yourself for the for people who might not know you? What's the uh, the basic way that you introduce yourself to anybody, maybe not in this setting as well? Just who you are, what you do, those kinds of things. Yeah. So Brian Schutte, uh I currently attend Hope Grimes. Uh, I'm married uh, with two boys, uh, ages nine and five. So I'm usually busy uh, chasing them around, uh, whether it's playing, camping, hiking, or going to different activities. Uh, so they're, they're a joy. Uh, I work at Wells Fargo uh, in, in software development as an agile coach. So that's what I do. That's what I'll go after this. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to be back, though. Happy to see so many friends and familiar faces. Uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, um, one of the questions that we ask, you know, uh, or that I asked Perry last time that I think is helpful as we kind of just share different stories of, of people that have been leaders, um, both here and at Grimes as you've been. Uh, Hope is a uh, place where you didn't necessarily have to grow up Lutheran. We learned that from Perry that he had a very different experience than classic ELCA Lutheranism. But uh, your story is different because you did grow up with classic ELCA Lutheranism. Uh, so talk about what that experience was like for you and uh, just kind of where, uh, talk about what faith was like uh, in your house growing up. Yeah, so I did grow up in a, a Lutheran church. Uh, it was the ELCA Synod, uh, but I mean, not a surprise, different than Hope. I, I haven't found another church <laughs> like Hope. Uh, but growing up, it was a traditional, uh, I'd say, worship, tra traditional uh, you know, upbringing in the sense of we went to church and when we opened up the Lutheran book of worship, uh, it, the book practically opened itself up because there were, there were certain pages that we used every single Sunday and that was okay. That's how we worshiped. Uh, and home was similar in the sense of we said the same prayer before we ate, said the same prayer before we went to bed. Uh, and so there's a lot of repeated uh, traditions. Uh, and growing up, it was, you know, an older pastor. Uh, it wasn't until a, a new pastor came on when I was actually going through confirmation, uh, equivalent of power life here, I believe, uh, where he mixed things up. He actually went out into the, we had a, a group in a small town, a uh, small farming rural community, and he went out and actually knocked on people's doors and got people into the church that had not been into church before and actually filled, it was probably a 300 person, you know, you could fit 300 people in our, our church uh, sanctuary. He filled the church and he started worshiping differently, mixing it up, uh, even brought in a new Lutheran book of worship. I'm not sure, it's a, a blue book, the way the green book before. Uh, I remember that was a big, that was a, a change for people. That was hard for some. Uh, but that helped me, though, just realize that yeah, there's different ways to, to worship God. Riots. Riots <laughs> broke out with the blue book. No, that's awesome. Now, what, what farm community did you grow up in? Uh, so I went to high school in Postville, Iowa. Okay. Kind of about 2,000 people. Sure. So that, that's the size. But Castilia was the closer town of 300 people. Okay. And that's where my church was. Got it. And uh, how did the people feel about the, the, the zany youth pastor knocking on the door? At, at first, they were, I'd say, you know, very hesitant, uh, yeah, pessimistic about it. But then, they, yeah, they realized that he, you know, loves Jesus, and and he was able to bring other people in. And once again, after things settled, uh, it, 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 yeah, it, the people did, I'd say, welcome it because you know the church was full, and so it showed that people were responding to him. And also in the community, he was just involved. Like he, yeah, worked really hard to be involved in the community. Yeah. Um, so as, as we all are handed certain traditions, as we are all handed certain, you know, experiences, uh, with God, we're also handed a version of God, right? Um, the, the God, uh, that God that we're handed has certain opinions of us. Um, talk a little bit about what you were taught about God. I mean, it's probably not terribly different because we are an ELCA church, but at the same time, the, the expression of what exactly that can look like can be different as well. So just talk about what you personally as Brian felt like with 
uh, what God thought about you uh, when you were younger, growing up in the in the LCA kind of traditional church. Yeah, I would say not a lot different from here. That that you know Jesus loves me. Uh, that, but I, I felt that God wasn't as accessible sure. <clears throat> as now that I know now that I can have a conversation with Him. Mm -hmm. That He wants to hear from me uh, on a daily basis. Whereas before, uh, growing up, I felt it was more uh, more rigid sure. and more. Yeah, like we, we, we say these things and that's that's how, that's the, the communication yeah. more one way. Yeah, so um, then as you continue to grow up, you know, you are not in Postville anymore, but um, you're, you're here in Des Moines. Did talk about then kind of as you uh, were growing up in this circumstance, then um, uh, m figuring out who you are as a person, just growing up in, in, in Iowa, what, uh, what, what are some circumstances or uh, situations that helped shape your relationship with God as you, uh, one thing that Perry shared with us last week is that you, you, you have to claim it for yourself at some point, right? So you, you were handed this, this traditional Lutheran view of things, but um, as your faith grew and as you figured out who you are as a person, what are some things that shaped kind of your individual um, relationship with God? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I would say, the first thing was in high school, uh, sophomore year, uh, my faith was tested when my best friend committed suicide. Mm. And you know that you know, being a small school, I mean, it, it, yeah, it shook me, it shook a lot of my close friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember then you know, reaching out more to my pastor at that point, talking with him, you know, a lot of why, why is this happening? Why did this, you know, just mm -hmm. was just you know, lost, confused. Uh, but then my faith, yeah, it was it was it was challenged, uh, but it did grow as I, yeah, like just started you know praying more about that, mm -hmm. uh, doing things like yeah, like I never thought I'd have to you know give like a eulogy for my my best friend you know in, in high school, mm -hmm. uh, but that just going through that that process, uh, yeah, did did I'd say test, but also grow my faith. Mm -hmm. uh, other times uh, more I'd say happier. Uh, Actually, so I moved to Minnesota after I graduated from Iowa State. Uh, so lived in Minnesota for 11 years. Uh, while I was up there, uh, so my, my wife and I, we, we got married, or my, 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 my wife, we, we, you know, we were, after we got married, we actually attended different uh, churches. Uh, she grew up Catholic. Yeah. You know, I grew up Lutheran. We, we tried to attend each other's churches and wasn't having it. Uh, in fact, the church I attended, uh, I, I found a not that, you know, a different synod, not that that matters, that's okay, uh, but it was closer to where we lived, and so it was, I could walk there, like, this is a great church, uh, I was attending, but I found out I really wasn't part of the church, uh, and I, that came to fruition when my parents visited, and so we went to church together, and as we, you know, we worshiped, and then at the end, you know, we're saying goodbye to the pastor, and the pastor, you know, shakes my hand, oh, welcome, you know, you have a new, a new person here today, <laughs> and so, I was not involved in the church. I was essentially there every so often, and I, need, I knew I needed to find a, a church community, yeah. uh, and that opened my eyes. Sure. So my wife and I, uh, uh, you know, we got pregnant, and our goal was to essentially find a new church community by the time our son was born. And so we went out, and we went to all kinds of different churches, you know, churches similar to Hope in the sense of like, because at the time we were going to a traditional worship, you know, not a, a band leading worship. Sure. We tried all sorts of different denominations, non-denominations, uh, different types. We landed on a church, uh, a Lutheran church, ELCA by chance, uh, in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, what they had, though, they had one worship service on Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and they had fellowship before and after that one worship. Mm -hmm. So just a really good, welcoming uh, community of people. Uh, they, so we, we, we joined that mm -hmm. uh, New, like we actually like committed to that church, let's say in August, but the new member Sunday was the Sunday before uh, my son was born on the following Tuesday. So sure. we, we met our goal of uh, yeah. finding a church community. Success. Success. You made you you got in, and if if your kid was born early, then the, God's like doesn't count. No, <laughs> doesn't count. No, the. Uh, it, I think you were going through something that I feel like everybody has had to experience in the past uh, at some point or another, which is uh, the, the unglamorous term for it is church shopping uh, whenever you go around and try a new church. So me having grown up around here, 
I had ne- not had to church shop for years and years and years. And then when I went to seminary up in the Twin Cities, same place, um, there's a lot of churches up there. And there's a lot of, like, really great churches, but from a lot of different traditions. And it's, it, is a re- it can be a really alienating thing. And so it's, it's, I'm excited that you were able to find a certain place then. Now, but then you came down from the Twin Cities. Was that, that was for work then? Uh, so my wife's family lives in Kansas. And mine is spread across uh, Iowa and now Minnesota. So really, we're in the middle of okay. our families. That's and it, it's a good central place. Sure. So um, you come down to uh, Des Moines. Um, what, how, how did you come to find Lutheran Church of Hope then? Yeah. So once again, we also were going around in church shopping, as you called it, and trying out different churches. Uh, my brother-in-law, Ryan, uh, invited us, I remember it was a Mother's Day weekend, so busy, like, like usual, yeah. but to, to attend. And so we attended West Des Moines first. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even though, like I said, in the past, like a worship leading the, you know, this, the or a band leading worship wasn't our thing in the past. We really just felt connected uh, to the message, to the, the, yeah, the worship style, uh, and we liked it. And then we saw, we lived in Johnson at the time, where we still live now, but then there's a closer campus, uh, and so we started attending there. Uh, yeah, just the rest is history. We set on that. And even though their campus pastor, Andy, is the worst, uh, they, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Andy's great. I just, just in case you were to see this. Is it gets, um, Andy, who, um, for anybody who's new, Andy, who is the campus pastor at Grimes, uh, was the uh, leader of Men of Hope, uh, before uh, I was, he was the staff person in this role, and now he's out at Grimes. And so uh, Andy's actually going to come in, and we're, we're getting Andy to come and share his story as a part of this series as well. But um, So don't worry, you're not completely rid of him. But um, talk a little bit, too. I remember when, because Brian, you helped with our Zoom efforts during COVID. Uh, Brian, being a technologically savvy guy, uh, was like, yeah, I can help us figure out how to get Zoom to everybody. So when everybody was at home or not here on Wednesday mornings, Brian was helping coordinate the Zoom efforts. And then I remember about a year-ish ago, Brian's like, hey, I'm going to commit to Grimes as we're starting some men's ministry there. And I, begrudgingly, uh, no, I, I was... I, I understood that move, uh, and talk a little bit, uh, hello to the Grimes folks, uh, wherever the camera is, the hello to you, um, super grateful to have you guys worshiping with us and, and learning about God and ourselves with us as well. Talk a little bit about Grimes and what that experience has been like, kind of restarting, not, not restarting because there have been really faithful, awesome guys at Grimes who have been meeting for a long time, but what's that been like as you kind of grow, not just as a campus, but as a men's ministry at Grimes? Yeah, and first I'm going to wave to the right camera. I see the green light that on. One. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so when I joined about, yeah, about a year ago, uh, we, I remember we had uh, a Go series, as they called it, so Man in the Mirror, uh, which I know we've done. We read the book Man in the Mirror here. Uh, we had, well, yeah, just really a, a, a go series, and we launched uh, about a five or six week study, uh, just yeah, talking about what does it yeah mean to be a, a guy and and learn about Jesus and and just yeah live life, mm-hmm. uh, and so that got me you know kind of in, and then from there we've done really like so as as you you know d- different teachings here whether it's you or other people you brought in we we watched uh, essentially on video uh, at Grimes and it. Aunt Pastor Andy has modeled it really off of this. So we have food every every Wednesday morning for that that ministry. Cool. Uh, we have worship, uh, like someone leads us in worship, and then we have yeah a, a, a large group more uh, you know teaching, and then uh, followed by small group breakouts. Uh, it's a, a lot of the same things that are offered here are offered in Grimes, just at a, a smaller scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we're really uh, as part of the men's ministry looking to so like ice fishing. You know, you saw you came yes. to. Grimes uh, for that. So we're looking to, where does it make sense for us to have events versus like, you know, come and and join you for wings and things here? Yeah, absolutely. And Grimes has been for a long time has been, there's, there have been people who have been, uh, like I said, meeting and uh, interested in starting men's ministry there and and continuing to do uh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing here. So we're just, we're really grateful for Grimes and for your leadership and helping uh, all of that go. Um, As you, and maybe it's with this, maybe it's in a different area of life, but you know, as we know, God is always working in our lives, leading us into different things, both big and small. Where is God noticeably at work in your life right now? 
Yeah, yeah. So I, one of the things that I've noticed is when you ask God, you know, to come in and, and, and help or you, you talk to God, you know, he will, he will come in. Mm-hmm. Might not be in the way you expect. Sure. Uh, something in my small group knows that, uh, yeah, so I was a couple years ago, probably three years ago now, praying. I, I was uh, overwhelmed and uh, just overworked. I was uh, not taking enough time off for myself, not taking care of myself with that, looking for more time with my family. I was praying to God, like, yeah, give me, give me, yeah, just give me more time with, with my boys, with, with my wife, uh, needing that, that, that space. And when God ended my contract early at work, that's not how I was thinking that would happen. Uh, but that did give me a break. And ironically, it was right before COVID. Uh, I had about six weeks, uh, you know, call a sabbatical. Uh, it was a six week time where I took my boys around uh, the metro. We did, you know, just the things I wanted to do, but did not have time because like I said, would not take a day off work hardly. Uh, and so I, I enjoyed that. And then, then COVID shut everything down. <laughs> so we were at home together then. Then uh, I was able to, you know, work, start working at Wells Fargo actually where I'm now. Uh, so that's one area where God, I saw, once again, you have to, I think, be just open to God, yeah, doing things in God's timeline and in God's way. Uh, but another way is letting other people come in and help you as well. And so last year, uh, actually, I saw I was having anxiety, and I went and I saw a Christian counselor. Uh, and that was a great experience that really helped me out. Uh, and so that, that was something new to me. Uh, not, you know, I, go to, I go for a checkup you know, every yeah. year for the doctor. Yeah. Uh, but saw something, oh, mental health, that's almost, you know, a taboo for me. I didn't want to, you know, necessarily sure. go see a counselor, but that really was a, a help me as well. And I feel God, you know, was, was, you know, part of that. God was essential in kind of leading you to a place of health, you yeah. feel like, giving, yeah. giving you the opportunity to do so. Yeah, it's okay to do that. But, and also, I think the important thing to acknowledge there is that you did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they, like, we all have opportunities all the time. What you could have said was... No, that's not for me, right? Um, I, when there is a campus closer to your house that things are not quite as established around here, the answer could have been, well, yeah, no, that's not for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, you could, uh, in the circumstance in which uh, you are essentially facing unemployment, uh, <laughs> your, your contract has ended early, um, you... Many people, maybe here, I don't mean to put this on y'all, it would be this way for me, would not look at that as a sabbatical or an opportunity. <laughs> You'd be saying words that maybe you don't openly say in this building quite that frequently and uh, have a lot of different opinions as far as, uh, or there, a, a sense of panic might set in, but you saw that as an opportunity and you said yes to that. And so I just, I'm noticing a theme kind of throughout it of like, y- you've, you have readily identified God being in the midst of, of a lot of these things that have happened, where a lot of us maybe <laughs> might, I, again, I won't put that on y'all, but uh, hopefully I would, I would see it this way, but the temptation is to not see God in the midst of all of that, but you, are, you uh, have continued to stay faithful to all of those things, and we're, we're really grateful for your leadership at Grimes, but uh, we, I, like I said, I, I texted Andy uh, when you let me know that you were headed over there, and I told him that he's dead to me. But also, uh, where I know that what you are, what you, what you're doing there is really essential, and uh, super grateful for the the Grimes squad, the Grimes contingent uh, that comes to our different events, whether it's the chili cook-off. Uh, they told us what they were going to win darts this year, and uh, a lot of those things. Uh, they're growing the pond out there. If you haven't been out to fish at that pond, I was like, how many? How are there so many fish that came uh, that got in this pond? And the guys are like, no, you don't understand. They are throwing Christmas trees uh, in there to try to grow this pond, and if they catch fish. Uh, I heard it is unreported, so nobody get in trouble for this, because it's maybe this is just hearsay, but people were also, like, catching fish elsewhere, and they're like, I, I brought it back, I threw it in the pond. Like, so, listen, these, these are the guys... Uh, the, that are leading the charge at Grimes, and we're really grateful for their their faithfulness. We're grateful for for the ways that they're they're leading out, and a lot of that is because of your fine leadership, my friend. So we're really grateful for you. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's yeah. it's fun to to be part of that, and it's, yeah, like I said, it's we're planning to we have quarterly huddles, and yeah. it's, it's it's fun to to see what's coming up and to see more men get involved, both from a leadership but also at our events. Yeah. So it's it, it's fun. It's a growing church. 
that I'm not. This is not a got you question. I did. I did not ask you this ahead of time. But is there, do you guys have any other events that you you got coming up around the bend? Anything you'd like to highlight here uh, for for Grimes Men's Ministry? Yeah, I know our next uh, quarterly huddle is on May 18th. Okay. It's a it's a bonfire night. So I believe from seven to ten. Cool. Uh, anyone here is welcome to register for that. Uh, you can find it on our link tree. I know it's a different link tree, but. I think we'll, your we'll link, like link tree trees. is on our link tree. <laughs> so I've joked that Andy's, uh, Pastor Andy's love language is spreadsheets and link trees because uh, Andy loves a good link tree. And so, um, rightfully so, because they're great tools. I believe the Grimes link tree is on our link tree. So if you scan <laughs> these codes, you should be able to get to what's going on there. But um, yeah, thanks for what you're doing here. Um, do you mind if we pray for you real quick? Thank you. Yeah, please. Awesome. Lord God, we just pray for Brian. We pray for Shooty and all the awesome things that he's doing in his life. God, we thank you for his clear eyes. Something I end up saying up here a lot, God, give us clear eyes. It seems like Brian's got that, got, got that blessing. So thank you for his optimism in the face of things that have, uh, he's confronted. God, I just pray that uh, uh, he would continue to be able to follow where you're leading him. Uh, I, I, I pray that he would continue to say yes to those opportunities of seeing you in the midst of things, God. I pray that he would also know that um, the guys at Grimes look up to him in that. Thank you for the great way that he so humbly uh, models walking out in faith uh, to, to the guys at Grimes. We pray for Grimes men's ministry as it continues to grow uh, and um, kind of, you know, take its own shape as far as what things are happening. God, be with uh, the rest of the leaders as well uh, as we figure out how to be the men that you made us to be, God. So we're just grateful for all the work you're doing at Hope Grimes all that you're doing at Men of Hope at large and the other campuses as well. And uh, bless us with health and safety and help us to hear the invitations uh, from Brian's story for us as well. It's in your good name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here. Um, please thank Mr. Shooty for being here this morning. My pleasure. Yeah. Discussion questions for this morning are as follows. What are some things that sticks to you, uh, uh, sticks out to you about Shooty's story? So I highlighted a couple things that were sticking out to me, but just feel free uh, to uh, talk about uh, kind of uh, what you hear from this morning. There's a, there's a practice called Lectio Divina where you read scripture and it's like certain things stick out to different people. Um, th this is a similar version, not that Shooty's story is scripture, but to hear me as I say it, which is to say that um, we all hear things differently. Things stick out to us based on our experience. Maybe you are somebody who's going, man, I really resonate with the fact that I also don't take off enough time of work. Or, man, I actually am going through some internal struggle right now, and I didn't I feel like going to the doing the whole counselor thing maybe isn't for me, but you're like, but he did it and it seems to, he seems to be okay. You know what I mean? Like he's somebody that you can trust in that. Uh, maybe you have gone through the loss of a friend uh, or any of these circumstances that he talked about. What sticks out to you and uh, uh, how is your story similar? How is it different? Uh, identifying some of those things and what are the invitations that you hear from it? Maybe it's the invitation that you need to see God in the midst of your story, and that is something you need to step into. Maybe uh, it's the fact that there are some action steps based off of things that he's done that you feel like maybe uh, would work for you. Whatever that is, uh, go ahead, discuss those uh, this morning, and uh, we'll be back with another Hope Story this next, uh, Men of Hope Story this next week. Uh, so thank you for being here this morning. We'll see you next week. Uh, grace and peace, friends. Go be good to each other. We'll see you. Thanks, sir. Yeah.